Uh, we are we are on, I think. So, hey everybody, my name's Kyle. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my friend Talia Flores. She is <laughs> she is a CP advocate. She's an author. She's a radio host. She's a YouTuber, lover of country music. So I thought she would make a great interviewee. So how's it going, Talia? Good. It's going great. Um, I have a few questions. I didn't write them down, but I thought about them. So oh. <laughs> we're going to touch on a little bit of everything. But what, and I know CP kind of inspires you to write, but how does cerebral palsy make you a better writer? Because I have unique experiences that no one else has. So when I write about it, it's always unique. Right. I think that's important to point out that, you know, your experience is different than my experience. And there can be some overlap and some relatable aspects like pain, for instance. But your life is your life and mine is mine. And, you know, they you can't pin cerebral palsy on one person and say that's what cerebral palsy looks like. No, like it's very different. It varies like they say I have the most severe case according to the charts because I have spastic, but it's like how I can talk, I could communicate, I can eat on my own, you know, so it's different. Yeah, so even though you have the label of severe, you're able to lead a productive life and you have a voice and you're using it um, to advocate for not only yourself, but others that can't. Um, Mm -hmm. And what do you think is the hardest thing about advocating? The hardest thing about advocating is that not everybody agrees with your message that you spread. And not everybody's going to appreciate what you do. And you're always going to have the, the haters and you're always going to have the people that dislike you. But that just means you're doing a great job. Yeah, I so. feel like... I feel like there's a lot of unity in the community, but also the reverse is also true. Um, yeah. I feel, I mean, I'm kind of new to it, but I feel that there can be some hate. Yeah. Um, and it, the crazy thing is that hate would be amongst advocates. Like, there's advocacy drama behind the scenes, and I, I just hate that part of advocating because it's like we're all fighting for the same cause so why don't we just put our differences aside and come together and we're all reaching different people i would like to point that out like mm -hmm. the, the people you connect with and reach to might not relate to me even though i have cp also and the people exactly. the people that i talk to because our experiences are different so we're not going to hit all the same people and that's okay. And that should be, you know, applauded that we're reaching all different types of people instead of saying, well, you're not doing a good job. It's yeah, like, no. but the person is trying and that's what we need is more people to try. Um, mm -hmm. That's exactly what we need. More people to try in this society and more people to to be able to uh, to be happy and successful in this community and show the world that people with disabilities may may have a disability, but it doesn't stop us from living our lives. Exactly. And the thing I kind of want to ask about or touch on is, you know, you and I are able to articulate ourselves and be a voice for cerebral palsy. Do you ever feel like people are like, well, you're not doing a good job for the nonverbal, or it's like, should, should I be advocating? And it's like, my answer is yes, um, because not everyone is willing to do it or can do it. So. See, I never had the problem that you just asked me come across. In fact, I get emails from parents that their kids are nonverbal. And it's like, I read your article or I saw your YouTube video. And that YouTube video helped me understood what my son or daughter's going through. So, yeah. Again. Yeah, I think that's been the coolest thing for me about 
um, just being on YouTube and joining the advocacy community is the comments of like, what advice would you give to me for my three-year-old who has cerebral palsy? And um, when people actually reach out to me and think that my opinion, you know, is mm-hmm. worth hearing. Because we live with CP, so. Yeah. And let me tell you, folks, it's it's a struggle. That's not to say that we're not, we can still struggle and be positive about our disability. Yep, like I tell people all the time, keep on stomping despite the obstacles you face. So, touching on that, how did you come up with um, Stomping on CP with Talia? Oh my goodness, funny story is that I was an all, at the time I was 18 years old, I was an author and I just started using Facebook And I wanted to get my story out there, and I wanted to start spreading awareness for CP. So one day, I'm sitting in my room thinking of names. And at first, the page was going to be, I'm not stomp, I'm not stomping, I'm not stopping with CP. Then it was going to be, unstoppable Tylea Flores to kick CP's ass. (laughs) I love that one. And then one day, I thought of an elephant. And how an elephant stomps on things when it's angry. So I said, stomping on CP. That's perfect. Yes. I never knew that. So I'm glad I asked. Um, And now I use that name all the time. (laughs) Yeah, it's all over your Facebook page. Check her out. Stomping on CP with Talia Flores on Facebook or YouTube segueing into YouTube, you just recently decided to relaunch your YouTube channel. What brought about the idea to relaunch it? What was about, was now just the right time or was there a specific well, event? It was, it was quarantine and the coronavirus. I was like, you know, and a lot of people reached out to me. They're like, yo, we miss your YouTube videos. When are you bringing those back? I'm like, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Cause the first time I didn't, really feel like I was successful at it but this time people were so excited when I brought it back it was like wow and to think quarantine would make me rethink about the things that I left behind so quarantine has been great for me because I've been able to be productive in that aspect right I because I also have this channel and you know it is a struggle sometimes that you don't feel that you're succeeding to the level that you want to um, so I, maybe that was a good idea to take a break and now it revived you. I'm not sure how long you've had the channel. I've had the channel since 2017. So four years. Wow. Yeah. And that's then, a long time. I'm coming up on my one year in July. So ooh. yeah, it's, it's exciting stuff. Um, and I figure, and I figure it would be something that my kids could watch too if I ever have kids and get married. Like, this is what mommy did while she was in quarantine, right? Or this, or this is what your wife did when we, when I was in quarantine, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing with the radio. I, funny story about that is that I went to let go in twenty, I think it was twenty nineteen. Hadn't the first show I had was an hour. And, you know, when you feel like it wasn't the right time for you to go back and do something. So I, I left the radio station and then Miss Edwina and me reconnected again in March for the CP conference. And she's like, so what do you think about bringing your radio show back? And I'm like, sure, it, it, it could be possible, but I'm bringing it back with a twist. Stomping on CP with positive thoughts where I give a quote, play some music, and just impact people with what I love, which is words. So, For anyone that wants to listen, give yourself a shameless plug. Okay, so for anybody that wants to listen, it's um, on letgoradio.net on Fridays at 11 a.m. Eastern Eastern Time. Awesome. Um, Stepping away from CP for just a minute, what is something that nobody really knows about you? Like a fun fact, a talent, hobby that you enjoy? A fun fact that's not related to CP. 
I'm also a songwriter, and I'm a film writer. You are? Yeah, I've had my songs recorded by an artist in the UK on SoundCloud. Holy cow, I didn't know that. And I and guess... I'm, working on, I'm working on writing a second album for that same artist to sing, so... Wow. Can we that, name can we name plug them or is that off limits? That's off limit off limits for now. Well that's awesome. See, and that's why I'm really glad I did this interview with you because you know, for those that don't know, Tyler and I connected in March because of the C P conference. So And that and that C P conference was phenomenal. Yeah, it really virtual, even though Corona, you know, it sucks. We're not gonna yeah, deny that. It's, um, quarantine sucks. Um, going digital and virtual has really brought a lot of people together because if it wasn't for that conference going virtual, I never would have been a part of it because I'm here in Illinois and, you know, Miss Winnie, Florida. Miss Winnie is in Virginia. So we would have... You know, it w just wouldn't have worked out unless we traveled. But, you know, with such short notice, because it was li literally I got a message on my YouTube video saying, you know, hey, there's going to be this conference next week. You want to be in it? Sure. Uh, and it has really helped connect a lot of people. Yeah, it really has, believe it or not. Like, for me, I've been trying to get down to the CP conference for years, but I just never, I just never got the chance to because it was such bad timing and speaking. But this year, I got the opportunity to speak at the, the conference and it changed my life. I know. That's what, I, for me personally, just deciding to make the YouTube uh, channel has changed my life because that's how Miss Edwina found me to do the conference and you know, then to do our special project that we're working on. Um, yeah, that's a big, that's a big project, but we can't spill the tea, y'all. But it is coming, and when it is, when we are allowed to speak about it, it will definitely be spoken about, because uh, there is a lot of us. Um, but yeah. then, you know, to then do two more CP conferences coming up in July and October. One in October, which is going to be amazing. You know, so is there any advice that you would give to um, someone that is thinking about becoming an advocate for um, disability? Because um, you've been take doing it, it a while, so. Take it one day at a time, and even if people don't believe in your message, just remember that you're doing the right thing, and Always stay humble and kind. Shout out to Tim McGraw. I love that song. Sorry. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Always stay humble and kind and keep your head up. Yeah. Because that's what, at first, when I started the YouTube videos, I mean, it was kind of on a whim. And then I thought, you know, how long is this going to go? And here we are almost a year. And now, like, I, I have to have a video you know, for Tuesdays, it's, you know, I, I just need it. You know, I, I love making them. I love putting them out there. You know, some videos don't do as well as you hope that they do. Um, but any person that you reach with your message, I think is it, valuable. Um, that would mm -hmm. be, that would be my advice to anyone is just know that your message is valuable no matter how many people you are reaching. Exactly. <sighs> but, you know, I'm really, really happy that we were able to do this, Talia. Um, Me too. We had some behind-the-scenes technical difficulties. Yeah, um, we did, but it was all good, though. We still did it. Yeah. So I appreciate you wanting to come on here and spread your message with me. Um, so I really hope that you have a good day, and I appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe to Talia's channel Talia Flores on YouTube. Listen to her on Let's Go Radio.net on Fridays, 11 Eastern. Um, she's on The Mighty. Please yeah, check her out Mighty. on The Mighty. Follow me on there. Uh, my website, www.taliaflores.com. 
My Instagram is stomping on CP with Tylia, and I hope to connect with all of you soon. And as a, also, don't forget to subscribe to me, please. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't forget to just subscribe to this awesome guy. Oh, thanks, Tally. I appreciate it. But thank you very much, and you have a good one. You too. Thanks.